Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, the organizers ask me to present some last finding of my working group concerning piles. Since 10 years, we have been doing research to explain more precisely what is the way of cooperation between soil and pile, and exactly saying, are we able to come closer to the mobilization of skin resistance and toe resistance depending on settlement, on the load which is pushed with the head. Uh, if we consider combined pile raft foundation, we understand that we have a plate which is elastic. The plate is resting on the soil and uh, additionally there are piles and at the head of piles there is also reaction of the pile uh, supporting the plate. In literature, it's possible to find uh, some solutions of this problem, but obviously uh, they contain uh, simplifications. What, is the, what are the basic sim simplification? A main simplification is that we assume that pile give reaction with a constant skin uh, resistance and also toe resistance. Uh, it is not true because with settlement resistance is growing up. Another simplification is that the reaction of soil at the contact surface, plate and soil, that is a linear dependence, settlement and stress. It is not true. It is true in theory of elasticity, but not in soil. In soil we see that the dependence is with a uh, power, square power. It means S is uh, proportional to uh, sigma to sec uh, square power. And then also simplification is that usually the authors of the programs, they are incorporating solution given by Businesque since 150 years ago. This solution was obtained uh, for continuous medium, not for granular uh, medium. And so uh, we should not expect, especially uh, dealing with lateral stresses, that those coming from the equation will be those which we can measure in nature. Those measured in nature are far away from those which are calculating. And knowing about this, the problem that we put was first, may we please change the method of approach, first incorporating static load test. It means that we have a static load test made somewhere in the field, uh, somewhere where uh, the site starts soon, and having the data, we are using this data. Second point is, we assume that the reaction of soil at the contact surface is not linear, is something like the second power, but sometimes it's 2.2 or more even. And third, we are trying to omit uh, describing lateral stress uh, to avoid incorporating them. So, Point number two, uh, we analyze the settlement of combined pile raft foundation taking, taking into account uh, interaction of all the uh, forces that we have. It means uh, we take uh, pile what it is, the static load test, and then uh, two additional uh, 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 principles that I have already mentioned, challenges. It was not easy to formulate a mathematical model of cooperation of soil and combined pile, uh, taking into account also uh, these <coughs> piles. Uh, and then finally, we set a program, we validate the program, and we come to the conclusion that the results are quite promising. Uh, on this picture, we are showing all the forces which are taking into account and interaction between them in formulating the field, the pattern of stresses. Uh, it needed to assume that at the contact surface the stresses are not uniform, 
they are different depending on the distribution of stress. Uh, also, mobilization of pile change uh, quite much. We assume that the load is equal to Q0 and that is constant. However, it can be changed. Well, maybe I will add, because we see here pile, the force which is added at the head is N2, at the toe N1, and then at the skin we have shear stress tau. Shear stress tau which are coming from static load test. Literature review, as I told you, there are some uh, methods that can be used, and they are used. Uh, however, uh, they use some simplifications, and uh, field tests say that the model should be, let's say, improved, it's trying to omit the simplification. So the main aim was to formulate a method that take into account static load test curve as a boundary condition of the solution and also the interaction between uh, plate and the soil. That is picture of the static load test. Sometimes it's quite complicated structure because at the head we are adding, we are applying a force load which is sometimes 10 mega newton. It is a lot, a lot of power. And assumptions, and assumptions. First, uh, flexible rough rest on semi-space. And semi-space is non-linear dependence between settlement and the stress. And then we are trying to avoid Vucinet's theory. We are using another principle of active uh, zone. And then uh, we are also taking uh, uh, static load test and all the rest have been already said that is the basic equation that we come that is non-linear heavily non-linear equation but it comes mainly from the non-linearity of the static load test results uh, but anyway it needs to solve it using different methods uh, what we did it was in fact at the beginning uh, final differences and uh, uh, some uh, application of uh, approach due to following iterations. Uh, that is some description of principles. We see that the sediment is produced by certain stress vertical beneath the plate, and then uh, if we have sediment, for example, some, somewhere else, we have to add this influence, then if we have stress due to uh, skin, we also produce some sediment and also uh, toe resistance produce sediment and uh, one pile against the other produce also sediment. So each of them <coughs> together are combined uh, by interaction. That is a curve which help us to solve the problem because to use the static load test, it needed to prepare a description of the curve. Uh, we cannot use directly the measured points, uh, load and sediment from static load test, because we have no information about toe resistant and skin resistant. It needs to describe the curve first, and this sort of curve satisfies some physical principles. There are two asymptotes, one that is at the point zero, and the other one at the point n uh, critical. Uh, between them, there must be the curve, and depending on the power k, uh, the curves are slightly uh, moving. Uh, we prepared a special methods of approximation using also <coughs> uh, some statistics and also some uh, soil mechanic principles to estimate those three parameters which help to draw the curve. And from this curve, we can draw to another curve, just mathematically. One, what is going beneath the toe, the other one, what is at the skin. If we know those skin and toe, depending on load or on sediment, we can go further. They are those three curves. The blue, that is toe, uh, the green, that toe green, the blue, that is uh, skin, 
as the combined uh, curve is uh, and two it is black but everything can be calculated and can be incorporated to the solution which is highly non-linear well uh, the description using matrix uh, that is if there are some uh, question about the way of solving i think i wouldn't go deeper into it because it's not interesting it's a method used in mathematics that we can solve nonlinear problems. And now, <clears throat> checking first how the plate is behaving when we put to the solution two curves. Uh, one curve that was a static load test to the left made and calculated parameters of the curve, and another static load uh, test which was done with another pi. Uh, down you can see what was the stratum of the soil, the soil profile, at the one pile and at the second pile, and they were taken to the solution. What is interesting, that is that the skin, skin shares test has a maximum. It means they are growing up at the beginning and then approaching maximum, and if we overcome a certain settlement, they are now later diminishing. Why it is so? Because there is uh, a slip, soil upon pile. If there is no slip, it will grow up all the time. If there is slip, it means it will be slightly smaller. And now what were the results of the, uh, of the two piles and plate? Uh, different depths, uh, different uh, thickness of the plate, 35 centimeters, uh, sorry, 15, uh, 30, 45, and 60, four different plates of different thickness. And uh, one, the, the piles are as it was uh, before, it means five, uh, four in the, uh, at, uh, at the, <coughs> four at the edges, and one in the middle. Uh, what we see that exactly how we expected, we have different distribution of the stress at the contact uh, surface, and the, 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 th the thickest uh, plate, in fact, is uh, working like a plate without bending. The very, very thin is bending uh, beneath piles at the head and also at the edges. And that is another uh, the second pile with a different uh, thickness of the uh, plates and also we have another uh, uh, settlement of the contact uh, surface it means the plates the curves they show what is the bending of the surface beneath the plates uh, it sounds uh, very good because it is something what we expect that it should be but then we are coming to the verification. To verify it, it was not easy to find legal data. The legal data we finally received from brewery company, uh, which were, they were building up the containers as a cylinders, uh, and the cylinders has a, a concrete plate and the piles beneath. Uh, there are made test, uh, uh, static load tests for one plate, for one pile, and the other pile for the second plate. And here we have a specification, a sort of files, which were produced. They were of different diameter, and the number of them was different. Taking the result of static load test and uh, the geometry of the pile and containers, and uh, the <coughs> soil facilities which are over there. We have the profile of our soil and we have also the static load test result. Taking this, and it was a layered uh, profile, it means with a different, uh, different soils. Taking everything into account, we came to the final conclusion. The final conclusion is show the, that is pile number one and then it's pile number two for static load test. But the final conclusion. The settlement which was calculated is given as 
Pascal calculated and measured, was measured using survey, geodetic, uh, at the plate edge uh, using certain equipment. So the results seems to be very promising because they vary from value to the right hand side plate. 13.8 going up to 15.6 measured was 16, 13 and 18. And the other plate was even closer to the measured value. That was something unexpected that taking into account quite complicated soil structure, taking into account piles with the different diameters, uh, we are coming finally to the results which is acceptable and uh, fits quite well what was measured. So at the end we can conclude that first it was possible to formulate a mathematical model which can be solved. This mathematical model is making less assumptions. It means we avoid assuming that we have a linear relation between soil and plate. If we consider settlement and uh, stress, uh, we are taking into account directly static flow test results and the, we don't use the uh, stresses which are calculated according to bushiness, which is very often made, especially if we consider the lateral stresses. Avoiding this, we are coming to the result which is very close to that which was measured. So, the presented model determines the relationship between load and settlement uh, of combined power raft foundation, and compared to the existing methods, we introduce a different approach, which are already uh, specified. We are coming very close to the physical model, especially if we consider result. And then the mathematical model was obtained numerically. Uh, however, uh, you can, uh, one can calculate it very quickly. And the analysis and the results confirm that it is possible formulate alternative model which is avoiding some assumptions that we disagree with this and we obtain quite good results. Thank you very much for your attention.